a talk about how we can uh, detect ABI breakages in our libraries in Debian earlier and run those detections across wider range of libraries because individual packages and individual libraries and individual upstreams are using the ACC tool already but I don't think enough people are using it and I would want to know how what can I do to make sure that more people use it um, Ta -da. Um, there are a few ways how uh, ABI can be broken in a library. Uh, the most common one, you change or remove symbols. For most of the packages, you should be using dpackage uh, gen symbols and check symbols files such that you can catch removal of, for example, C um, symbols from a library. Uh, with C, uh, if, for example, arguments on the particular function change, uh, you will not notice that change in symbols files, but the ACC tool will notice that. And it will inform you that the ABI has been broken of how many parameters it has or what their sizes are, if the sizes of the structures change. Right? For C++, um, symbols, they are more verbose because they do encode the return types and the types that you pass to functions. Uh, however, if you do changes to the templates, um, your symbols file will not tell you that ABI has been broken, but ACC can detect uh, changes in C++ templates. Right? And if your symbols files are not that good, or you don't specify tight enough version numbers, and you break your ABI, but your version dependencies are too wide, then you didn't help much, because you can still install broken packages which fail to run at runtime. Um, here's a few tools that you can be using. I'm mostly going to be talking about ABI compliance checker but there is ABI dumper, there's sanity checker, and there are other ways you can do this. So for example, if you run out of package test, that your binary starts and can print help text output, that means that it can open and find all the shared libraries and there was no ABI breaks, presumably, such that you can execute things at runtime, right? And typically how we find ABI breaks is that somebody uploads a new version of the library, somebody goes and does routine rebuilds, and then the rebuilds fails to build from source because the API changed and presumably the API changed at the same time, and then people complain, which is, I think is a bit too late. We should be able to do this much earlier. Um, yeah. And then we, once we detect that there was a library break, we need to upload a new library again, bump the API number, Sometimes they've been specific if, if it was broken in Debian only, and then rebuild everything and that's such that we get the correct dependencies. Um, the ACC tool is quite useful because it can uh, operate in multiple modes. Uh, typically, you, s you pass it a shared library, and it will scan all of its symbols and try to extract as much information from the shared library as it can. But you also can pass to it headers, and that will scan all the structures, their sizes, uh, what type of arguments you're supposed to pass to each function, and what are the return times, such that it can generate an extensive, basically <coughs> structured flat text file of everything it can find out about a particular combination of files. And that can generate your dump, and you can then compare your next library revision against the dump. It also has a few other modes where you can generate a dump for a whole system through it. So for example, squeeze default installation, or like wheezy default installation. And then you can take your binaries and test whether they will run against those truths without actually executing that binary. Such that it will analyze if all the shared libraries are present and if all the symbols are present and if they're compatible. Which is useful if you are a third party vendor and you need to check that your uh, compiled binary package does work against multiple distributions, for example. Um, a while back, uh, I've added DHACC uh, helper add-on to the uh, API compliance checker tool in Debian, such that it would help you to generate the dump site build time, and it will also compare the API of your new updated library uh, at build time such that your builds will fail if suddenly your library becomes ABI incompatible. 
that's very good because if your builds fail, that means it will never hit even unstable, such that in even unstable you wouldn't see an ABI break. Um, this is all kind of cool. You do bootstrap it slightly the same way how you bootstrap symbols file. You first add a description of your headers and your library, and then you upload that. Once it builds once across all of the architectures in Debian, you can fetch the uh, devs themselves and then extract the ABI dump tarball from ins inside each architecture build. And then if you commit those to your sources of your Debian source package, your next upload will verify that you're still compatible with that old API and ABI dump. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, um, however, it, it's still quite manual, right? So in the, uh, I'll show you slightly later. In, in the manual description, you still end up having to list the libraries that you're testing, and you have to specify the header files that you're testing. And what ACC tool uh, uncovers quite often is that not all headers are actually compilable, and a lot of he headers, you cannot compile them by just including them. They sometimes need optional extra other includes, or they depend on the include order, or you defining some extra variables to actually operate. Hence, a lot of headers, for most libraries, you will hit that you have to exclude certain headers from being checked for ABI compliance. And uh, the default simple way to configure ABI compliance checkers, to just pass it a list of headers or directories with headers and libraries, which should work most of the time, but once you need an exception, you have to convert and write an XML description of things that you need to dump. And jumping from a flat list of files to an XML has proven to be not user-friendly, <laughs> even though it's quite simple. Hence, there has been very little uptake of DHACC so far that I've seen in the archive. I can give you a real example of somebody who is actually using it as is in the archive today which is quite cryptic because they are they're using multi-arch and I didn't take multi-arch into account. Hence, they pre-process their definition file first and then they run the actual DHACC tool. And the description file that they specified is an XML, which is very verbose and cryptic in my opinion. Uh, but they do specify the original version number that they took the dump off and tried to compare to all the time. Uh, they specify where their headers are, which headers to skip, because presumably that header does not compile by itself, and uh, which libraries <coughs> to check, and they do substitute the multi-arch variable in there. Um, in my opinion, this is too verbose, but it's not that bad. I, I think most people would be able to write something like that for their own library. Uh, the other bit which I didn't consider, when I brought DHACC, I was thinking that people will take the dump from their build directory, such that your path should have been uh, current directory dot slash Debian slash temp user lib blah blah blah. In this case, this person is running this tool actually as an auto package test, such that it's running uh, against installed libraries in the installed environment instead of the build time. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's how they did it, right? Um, and now I'm coming to a few more like open questions of how would, how would you want the library dumps to be maintained? Who and where should be comparing the dumps? For example, should it be done at, at should you commit all of those config files in your uh, Debian source package? Or shall it be managed and stored externally somewhere? For example, on a hosted service which goes and scans all of the Debian archive and tries to compare the dumps of everything that it can find, and things like that. Um, should it be run as an out-of-package test? Would you like it to be run as an out-of-package test? I mean, some people, I've started talking to a few people and they use it quite differently. So for example, upstream, they, uh, they run API compliance checker before releasing a new upstream as, a, as an upstream developer. And they do so by installing the previous version on their system. 
and then running the ACC from the build directory to compare the system library against the one that you've just currently built. But that's kind of a recursive build dependency if you actually try to upload it into the archive. Hence, they don't upload it and do it on every build. And um, there is a there is a project related to the upstream developers. They run upstreamtracker.org, where upstream developers are encouraged to add their own libraries and the descriptions of their libraries, such that all versions are scanned and all versions are compared against each other to check for ABI breakages. And hopefully, if internet works, I would be able to show you how those results look like. Uh, that didn't work well. No, I don't know. I'm going to check it out. Uh, that's exactly how that's supposed to work, right? Uh, this is the most exciting part of the presentation, Retrieving files via HTTP is very complicated, so it should be, have a difficult user interface. <laughs> right. So uh, I've opened GNU-TLS upstream tracker, where it tracks various version numbers which are cut off on the screen. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, ouch. Would it have just been Oh! <laughs> <laughs> More practical solution. Uh, right. So here they check. Uh, this is results that ECC generates in HTML if you provided a lot of version numbers as you can. And you can see that 3.3.0 did break uh, ABI, and so did 3.0. 2.12, hence there was 12.1 released straight after to resolve the API break which was which happened in the stream there. And if you if I manage to click stuff here. So here's the here's the full report for the API. Bunch of symbols, but they have removed a bunch of symbols. And if we jump there, we can see that x ssl.h header was removed, and all of those symbols were gone, and the shared library was gone as well. Presumably, it moved somewhere else, and maybe you would be able to still get it, or maybe it's gone for good. So this doesn't tell us what actually has changed. But you could, uh, it, it generates a lot of other information as well. So for example, it marks things. Uh, Um, so it gives you explanation of things that change. So for example, something changed to a const pointer instead of the one that you can modify. Um, in practice, it's a low severity because the type didn't change, the position didn't change, the size didn't change. But the fact that it's now a const pointer, somebody may have relied that it isn't and somebody's uh, GCC w all w error compiles will start failing because of this change if somebody's not passing things right. Okay, so that's the overview of the API compliance checker tool, and now is the question, why are you not using it? Or are you using it, and if you are using it, how are you using it? <coughs> or how would you like me to improve it? It's usage in data. Uh, 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 um, I, I'd like to ask a, a really stupid question. Yes. Um, I don't understand, is it using all the library or can it operate off? It can it operate on one or the other, or it can operate on the other. Therefore, it's separate packages. And then here, files, which tries to so anything from down here, and, uh, and the functions and what you're supposed to pass to them. Separately, it does the dump of the library where it extracts the symbols from the library. library itself. So it's two separate dumps. One is called binary, the other one is headers only mode. Right, and the binary mode uses the, presumably the debug information, etc. so it's as comprehensive as the headers mode? Uh, almost for most things. So for C, it's almost as comprehensive, but it doesn't know the struct sizes, for example. Right, because... Because that's not included in a shared library. 
I'm not sure if it checks that yet. I ha I've read the whole source code of the whole thing. It's not very complicated. It's a lot of Perl. But, um, so it, the advantage of using only the binaries right. is that you don't have to worry about uncompilable headers. Right, and strange headers and pre this headers and, yeah. and, and what. Yeah. And so but I don't see how much that is an improvement over just regular dpackage symbols. Okay. The binary only mode. In that case, uh, you know, we've got a limited amount of effort. This this needs to be automated. It's, can we automatically detect which headers were used? Can we, I don't know, grab them out of the debugging data and then produce Well, I was thinking I was thinking to do multi-pass of ACC tool such that if it finds uncompatible headers, just uh, remove them or have a f option flag to automatically remove them and rerun it again until it runs with no errors. Because usually you only need to remove like a handful of header files such that you are ABI checking most of them if you can. Um, and then if I do automate <laughs> it, do I automate it and send a mass back file of patches across all Debian maintainers or am I running it separately as a fake auto package test type of thing? Go on. Actually, that's an, that's an interesting idea. Maybe um, they should be run centrally as some sort of auto package test uh, and hooked into the testing propagation in a way that doesn't require manual input by the maintainer. Because one of the issues that, that why I haven't started using this is the bootstrapping stuff. Well, A, I don't want to ever look at XML, and B, <laughs> um, yeah. I noticed up there, do you still have that web page handy where you can? Yeah. Um, so, one of the things I noticed in, in the. Uh, do I the want to go previous, back? Yeah, the previous page showing the, uh, the compatibility between versions. It's, yeah. It's not clear, like, so it says 3.2.12 is incompatible. It says 3.2.12.1 is compatible, but it's not actually clear whether that means it's compatible with 3.2.12 or 3.2.11. Right. Um, and so, so, are these actually all the same upstream, or are these all the same? Entropy. Um, uh, even. Okay, so they're all the same, that's no name. So, in fact, they... I guess they could have improved uh, it. If you see the SO names, it checks multiple libraries. So, it's a report for the collection of those, whatever, five, six libraries. Right, but it is asserting here that... Our well, tools repository more efficiently. Battle with different basic. Right. In a later version is part of the upload. In fact, you have to go through that process. And is annoying. Yeah, and in libraries where you have um, differences per architecture, that is very annoying. Well, the API dumps, they are arch specific, such that at the moment my tool does account for that in d the helper, such that you actually need to supply dump for each arch that you want to be uh, checking the compliance on. Yeah, <laughs> it is very annoying. Uh, the other bit is that do we want to only check against one base or do we want to check against each version that ever was in the archive? So for example, if Lipfu was, had three versions in the archive, when I upload the fourth upload, shall I be checking against the last upload or all three previous which claim to be that saw name? should be sufficient. Devices. Yeah, considering you did it on each upload, each time you didn't break it, then it's fine. Right. Okay, and but if you break it once, system. you'll still notice it. That's a fairly high bar for maintainers. Um, library maintainers are usually, uh, know what they're doing more than the average maintainer, but it's still, okay. it's still, it's still tricky. Uh, when you say library maintainer, you mean upstream, not Debian developer. No, I, I mean Debian maintainers. Oh, okay, okay. Because the Debian maintainers are going to have to maintain the manifests. True. Yeah. Uh, true. This was an example of just third party not me actually using this tool. I would have done the DH exact type of thing as myself. I mean, I, I presumably I could write something like that to run against the Debian archive, but would it be useful? 
or would you rather do it on in the source package such that your source package breaks? So I, I think you should think about the data flow. Um, so right. you should think um, where should the manifest be kept? Are we are we going to implicitly regenerate the manifest from Squeeze and compare it with what's in Wheezy? Um, rather, or or are we going to you know manually maintain the manifest? You well, um, but you. You need to think about how this will play out with derivatives. Um, and it'll we'll add symbols to their shared libraries. Is, so I'm just going to trade off for derivatives. We can, if we don't do something that means that derivatives get the benefit of this checking, it also means that derivatives pay very much less about this kind of stability than we do, will unnecessarily trip over build breakages um, when they change things. Wow. I mean, in Ubuntu, for example, there are a few core libraries that add additional symbols, which are not upstream and are not in Debian. And ideally, you would want to verify that those symbols are never dropped, especially so since they are not to drop, given that they're Ubuntu-specific and not even upstream or Debian. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm more worried. I'm not very worried, worried actually, about that. About, about, you know, that we do something that might or might not by default, do the best thing for Ubuntu. Right, okay. There's probably not very much work for Ubuntu to make it do a To update better. the dump and yeah, or, or make it build. That yeah. needs to be done. The, but there are, you, we've got lots and lots of derivatives now, and, and yeah. we should be making things work well for the people who don't have much effort. Okay. Right. An XML, even seven lines, is that's, that's, that's too high. high. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to make another comment about auto package test. It is possible to write auto package tests that test packages other than the one that contains the tests. Um, and you could do such a thing, and then you would have to teach. You, you, you need a new, in, a slightly different invocation room, of course, because now the package that is to be tested must be specified on the auto package test command line in a slightly different way. But right. Test definition, you can write tests that, that, that do this thing, that yeah. Do that kind of thing. Um, but I well, don't know whether that's useful or not for you, but it's a thing I should mention. I mean, I, I really like to do it at build time because uh, packages are built for all architectures. And I have no idea the password for this machine. Um, um, so, uh, because Debian has a lot of architectures, and auto package tests currently are only run on uh, AMD64 and i386. Right, that's a good reason for doing it at build time and doing it as much as possible based on information in the source package. Okay, but that means patches, and it can explode your source package by bit. So, for example, a dump for a single architecture can be megabyte compressed. which ends up in the Debian disks. Yeah. That's quite exciting. Yeah, and, that, and then people <coughs> tell me, well, I gave you a tarball which is compressed, and then people say, well, I'm committing it into Git, hence I don't want an ABI dump compressed, I want the flat text file, which is obviously larger. <laughs> well, the Debian, all the Debian packages are compressed during transport. So True. compressing the file again when dumping it in the Debian directory is probably not helpful. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, I still don't know what Robert Allison provided me. I hope you don't want to see the slides again. Or me. It is not nothing. Very small. Anyone else? Maybe it was DAPCONF because she was typing F. Team. Yeah. Uh, Somebody ping Alice on IRC and ask her for a password. <laughs> or maybe Docker did. Did you? Fubar. Did you Excellent. Excellent. Hello, Matthias. Would you like to track GCC API? <laughs> I'm not trolling. You mean have the package fail to build when the GCC is missing? Oh, yeah, 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 that bit. Because that would detect it. Because you see, it checks, it will tell you. That would never happen. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Actually, if you're not jumping, you would like to What? What did you I say? Don't know, was it generating an empty LibGCC1 package, or did it not generate the package? 
I think the package was there in the library or not. <laughs> <laughs> it was the special case of special. So this tool, very sophisticated, can detect missing shared libraries if you forget to ship it. <laughs> <laughs> Which totally did not happen, right? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so this is um, step huh? six with your behavior building. Can't hear a word you're saying, Wookie. But this is um, all uh, the records. It doesn't turn out. So how much does this work? Does this approach work for? Right. Um, so it okay. has support for templates. So let's talk about this um, package plan. Whether the change inside your template will affect the ABI of the library which happens to use that template after it's rebuilt. <laughs> However, to actually test that, you need both the library that uses that template and the templates themselves, which are often two separate projects like Boost and Libfu. <laughs> PP, as they're called, right? Um, uh, and then it can check the ABI, and it will tell you that the template has changed, the template API has not changed, but when you will rebuild it, your library ABI does change. So it has support to detect that, but it's, uh, I haven't managed to actually construct the config file to detect it and actually give me a correct answer, and I've detected this failure. So I could work on it if there is a good example, such that I could... So there's a new project called uh, Lib Abigail. Lib Abigail? Yes, A-B-I-G-A-I-L. Okay. Um, which Wh exactly tries to um, track... Um, Templates? Templates, yes. Okay. Okay, I, I was not aware of that one because the ones that I've listed. Uh, it's in you. Oh, it's in you. Okay. Because these are the tools that I've tested. So they're Sanity Checker and API Dumper. I was not aware of that one. I'll, ideally, you would integrate as many as of them as possible to detect things. But, okay. So uh, everybody will be happy when I send them a 10 mang patch against their package to commit in the source package. <laughs> How are you tracking ABIs? Um, I can just record it locally. Uh, right, you do it locally. You don't make it public. No. <laughs> and it's not done on every build. No. Would you want to? Thank you. Um, Mm, okay. Right. I mean, if I set up a public server, it will most likely track AMD64 and i386, and maybe ARM if somebody donates me loads of ARM hardware. <laughs> uh, can you do this checking in a crossway? So I, yeah, I install a, a weird version of this tool on AMD64, and I can check all the architectures with throwing CPU at it. <coughs> I think yes, yeah, because I yes, that should work. We did the check for oh, you did the test. With the RMHF doing the uh, soft load, hard load change of its, uh, well, no. Q double to Q real. Q double to Q real. Uh, <laughs> I ran all those checks on AMD64. It was horrible, but that had nothing to do with it being crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you need a cross pity tools available or anything? Um, I probably had one, so I can't tell you. Well, so I have a package. We compare the tools just sitting around, and I probably yeah. just pointed it at my cross tool chain and told it to do the thing, and it did. Um, so it the problems I ran into with that had nothing to do with whether I was cross or not. It was just the fact that, uh, you know, I was trying to get answers out of all of the Q headers about the yeah. thing. Um, and that was a, a problem unrelated to whether it was cross or not. Okay, and that would bring us back to the thing that, you know, in Ubuntu I have crucial chains to most arches that we care about, and in Debian there are, there are no cross tool chains for all arches from like AMD64. And it's quite a long People are working on that, I've heard that before. Probably at like last AFCONF. Are they available? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's your machine. It's my machine, and I built 
Hi. You have cross tool chains to all arches? I want that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> very lightly. <laughs> Just a little bit of sprinkle. Uh, why? Why talk to him? I can sponsor packages for you. Are there some patches missing, for example? <laughs> <laughs> this is not an accusational question it's whatsoever. It's a very strange conversation <laughs> where most of the people in the room have got no idea what's going on. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least. Yeah, no. This is this is kind of like playing loud. It's so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a package, but it has been modified in the main event. Well, the package reports differs from the cabal file in the table. They do it, but they can not. <laughs> <laughs> but he's welcome to tackle me anyway. Huh? That was two years ago. So if this, the simple thing checking for C++ is a massive pain in the ass. Well, the templates. The templates have been multiple architectures, and you get all these crazy strings. Yeah. And they have to mark some options. And they have to go with the other things in the pile, and it's very annoying. Yeah. Um, the problems don't really change, it's the same set of problems. Uh, this, this thing finds more problems Indeed. than the symbols. Right. And for example, for practice, so for example, if you drop or change private symbols, this thing will tell you that symbol has disappeared and symbol was changed, your EBI incompatible. Because your symbol is public and it is in the shared library, it has no idea that it is somehow else how marked private in like API documentation. Because what happens a lot, people say, oh, these are private symbols, but then they stick it into the shared library such that it's accessible to anybody who links against it. Well, that's not very private. That's like a normal symbol. <laughs> so, you know, then, then it, this tool detects it and then you need to actually check if anybody else is using those symbols or relies on them. And that's slightly harder because you need it's checking all the dependencies. Yeah. It doesn't help much with C++. It finds more interesting things in C++ than the compiler dependent symbols. So it actually finds C++ specific API breakages. Because the package symbols, it's mostly, you know, ELF based C type of, mostly for C <laughs> type of changes of API. Oh, I have 10 but minutes left in this session. That's been quicker than I thought it would be. Yeah. So exter everybody would happy to see an external website and maybe not act upon it. <laughs> and then not many people would be happy with 10 megs committed to their Debian source package. Not really. Okay. Unless it's very important. Experience. Library. Uh, so like in the core. W would you want an ABI dump? Uh, see, we effectively do this upstream and trust that upstream is not screwing it up. Okay. We don't actually ship uh, a symbols file in the source package at all. We trust that the symbol versioning in Jim's upstream is correct. Mm. Okay. Should I just repeat that all over again? So, yeah. <laughs> would you see, well, all the Debian glibc maintainers are also upstream developers as well. So, we, <laughs> right. we trust that we're doing these, these checks correctly upstream and time we're right. Um, and in our case, because we use symbol versioning very, very heavily in GLC, that allows us to auto-generate our symbols files and they are, they generally should be correct. Now it's possible a Debian patch could drop a symbol and maybe we would like to know that. On the other hand, we'd also like to think we're not that dumb. Mm -hmm. So, mm, yeah. like, like the massive, however large that dump would be for GLC, which would be very, very big, I'm not sure if it's something we would care to have or maintain. Right. For some of the smaller libraries I maintain, like say libart has, which I, uh, you know, I, I that's a, a fire and forget maintenance for me. That would actually be kind of handy, I think, to, to have that right. extra level of security. Well, for me, I would ideally would want to have this tool reliable enough to detect that the boost API stays stable, <laughs> such that such that when they release a new upstream version, I don't need to repackage and rename ABI of every single library. Just some of them. <laughs> Although that sounds scary, <laughs> but <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Um, the other thing, like for example, the recent 
ABI break, which wasn't an ABI break, was simple conflicts, such that we had uh, GNU TLS 2.6 and we had GNU TLS 2.8. And both libraries had conflicting symbols, such that when eventually enough people started using the new one, but there were still users of the older one, when a, a binary had uh, both libraries linked against it transitively, uh, it would explode at runtime because the symbols were conflicting. How can we detect that? Okay. So maybe running this for a while uh, so that we can send people mails. The is you get told after the fact that you've broken the library, after we've uploaded it, and it's already a new version, and you go, oh, by the way, it's wrong. Yeah. Um, and I knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know to what, how useful that is. Uh, At least I guess block. The way is they can fix it and go back, which when you get it's broken again, because now it's different from the last version. Yeah. Um, but really, I think you, a way of supplying to maintainers the information do you realize that the ABI changed? And that means that this needs to be adequately reliable. Yeah. Um, and you need to work out, as you say, you compare it just against the last one, the last end, or the last end, the last major. Or against stable, or against three. testing. Exactly. But if you can, if you can supply a useful, a useful, useful data feed, feed that a maintainer would actually find useful. You know, yes, this changed, and the version number suggests it shouldn't have. Okay. Then that's, I think, that's the kind of info people actually want. Okay. And yeah, it involves putting several megabytes there in their own package. They might be that used. Uh, okay. And the problem is those, you know, okay. people the library is able to check it. Mm. Uh, so that's the way you, you would never notice. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of the libraries that I've maintained upstream has yet to release a new point release version update, like micro point release update, which does not break ABI. So for me it was easy. I, I I was bumping the ABI by default, but then I would like maybe I should stop doing it, and then I would run the check, and it's broken. <laughs> it's broken. <Right. laughs> they they change classes inheritance for no reason, and that breaks C plus plus ABI straight off the bat. Oh right. <laughs> okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah. Okay. Do people care checking whether this binary still is executable in Wheezy and Jesse and, for example, said without recompilation? Because you can take a dump of squeeze. You can make a squeeze shroot and take an ABA dump of that shroot. And then you can make a dump of unstable shroot. And then you take your binary that you've compiled, and you can ask, will, will the, my binary run against that system? So, such that you check that you're still compatible across multiple systems. So for example, if I'm um, a third party vendor of games, and I'm called, um, not Valve, but Host, and I can, them I, I, <laughs> I check that, for? and then I can verify without executing the game actually that yes, everything is compatible, or no, some library changed its IBI or API or package version numbers changed, yeah. such that I need to do something to keep it running, or like provide a compat library with my distribution method. Or do people who do this are not in this room? <laughs> Or maybe the question is too confusing. I'll, I'll write a blog post about it and about the session and notes and see how that goes. Anything else? Oh, okay. um, I would just like to know that there are a few failures on the CI that have not been related to ACC. Mm -hmm. Some of them are KDE related packages. Okay. 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 I can look into it and fix them. Does does CI Debian does not have retry button yet? No. Okay. <laughs> it will retry whenever anything needs a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to trigger it, yeah. Okay. Anything else?
Well, I'll, I'll write up a blog post and it will be on Debian Planet and then the URL to the slides will be there and I'll try to submit them to Summit as well, such that if you browse on Summit, you should be able to find the slides as well. And if you have any questions, then uh, ping me on RC xnox or email xnox at debian.org. So. Thanks a lot. <laughs>